Hello friends, Osiris here, and in today's video we're going to have a discussion about the one Pokemon I feel might be behind everything that we're going to see play out in the brand new announced Pokemon Legends ZA game. So the devil's in the details, right? Pokemon always put details into things to lead us down a certain path, a direction to join the dots, or maybe even foreshadowing certain things that we're going to see in a future game. I think one of the first things that we noticed from that very short trailer that we got in the Pokemon Presents was a post from Joe Merrick, where he outlines the hidden colors in the dash in the logo Z-A. As you can see in this close-up, in the dash itself, there is a hue of red and blue, maybe suggesting that Xerneas and Yveltal have a big role to play in these games which would make sense we're in Kalos these are the main legendaries of these games but it's in these details that I think we can delve a little bit deeper into having a look at maybe the overarching story of Pokemon ZA and then maybe some of the possibilities that we see are going to be playing out in these games so the first thing I want to take a look at really in this video is what the trailer is all about the basic premise of the trailer is an architectural plan of Lumio City we know it's an urban redevelopment plan of Lumio City and we see the confidential document which leads us into the actual trailer to see a bit more a wireframe perspective of what Lumios City could be. Now I'm presuming like a lot of other content creators have theorized that this game is going to be set in the past. Maybe not as far back as 3000 years ago to the Great War but I think more likely to the times of the late 1800s shortly after Pokemon Legends Arceus was set and in a similar time frame to when the actual redevelopment of Paris in France happened which saw the construction of the Eiffel Tower and for me this makes a lot of sense but going back to the architectural plans I think there is a lot of details in this that we can take a look at one of them in particular when we look at this first shot of the urban redevelopment plan of Lumio City is we can see it's a confidential document but there is a logo up in the top right hand corner and it is in this logo that it does appear throughout the trailers pretty predominantly and would indicate that this is the organization that's behind the redevelopment program now one of the first tweets i saw with anyone mentioning anything to do with this logo that does appear in the trailers was eduardo who says quasar and quasar is a very good point to make about this logo because it is very similar shape to what a quasar is but I want to take us down a little bit of a different path here because one of them in particular that really always stood out to me was this particular logo. It does flash up very briefly of the intermittent start of this footage, but it wasn't until I zoomed in on this logo to have a look if there was any further details. And just like that dash that we saw in the ZA logo, there is a lot of detail that we can see that I don't believe anyone's really picked up on yet. So when you zoom in on the logo, you're going to notice that there are colors around this whole logo and these colors are red yellow white light blue and dark blue so you can see them here and then if you go over to other areas of the logo particularly the more bluey areas of the logo itself you'll see hues of green as well so there are a variety of colors within this logo all reminiscent of what you would see in a prism when you fire white light into a prism refract and then what's fired out of the prism is a rainbow color which is surrounding this logo which I find very strange and I feel like has a deeper meaning to it. The other thing that I kept thinking about with this organization was what was one of the biggest events that we've had play out in Kalos's history and it is the Great War of 3000 years ago. And the big pivotal thing in that war ending was the ultimate weapon. That in itself was a symbol of power, but we know from the story of AZ, he buried that weapon so it couldn't be used as a subsequent fallout from ending the war on both sides. But I think the ultimate weapon does have a key role within this logo and maybe the remit of this organization in general, and we can line up and connect a few dots because of this. And one of the first things that came to my mind when I saw this logo and then I got thinking about the ultimate weapon was an episode of Pokemon Evolutions. It's episode three, it's called The Visionary, and it's all about Lysan and in that episode we see Lysander fire off the ultimate weapon. Now if you look at some of the stills of the ultimate weapon when it's been fired off you can see some very big similarities between the logo of this organization and how the energy from the ultimate weapon is being portrayed. We don't get a very good view of it in the games itself but in this episode in particular it is shown in a very specific way. You've got the dust circle around it in a lot of these pictures, which is reminiscent of the logo itself. And then the quasar shape of the logo as well, 
which is very similar to how it's also portrayed in this particular episode of Pokemon Evolutions. And then I think you go a little bit deeper and say, well, what was the energy that was fired out from the ultimate weapon? I know it was destructive, but it also could be used to bring back life. We know the whole story about AZ and him initially creating it to be a machine to revive his Floet. So it has a destructive and it has a life giving power to it. But what is it in general? There are some links that we can look at. 3000 years prior to the events of X and Y, Izzy's Floet had been sent to the war, resulting in the Pokemon's death. Izzy created a machine to revive Floet that ran on the life force of many Pokemon. Although the revival was successful, his rage was not settled leading him to convert the machine into what is now the ultimate weapon, which he used to end the war. Professor Sycamore believes the machine's energy is the same that is used in Mega and Keystones, which allows trainers to Mega Revolve their Pokemon. So that's a really big important thing. I think we need to keep that in mind. And also this next point, where Xerneas and Veltal's light, which had powered the weapon, radiated across the region and infused itself within evolution stones creating mega stones so that's kind of where mega stones came from from the ultimate weapon which resided from being powered by xerneas and eveltal's light i think these are key components in this we also look at an excerpt from pokemon omega ruby and alpha sapphire so taking a bit of a curveball here and going back to horn but there are specific links here to horn i think this is going to tie into the overall discussion of today's video Prior to the events of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Mr. Stone's grandfather, the previous president of the Devon Corporation, researched the ultimate weapon and wished to use the same energy to help people and Pokemon. So there are two things here that are very indicative of information that we've seen in this trailer already. It's maybe not as subtle, but there is a link to the Infinity Energy being the representation of this company's logo. And there's also the line of helping people and Pokemon. So the whole remit of the redevelopment of Lumio City was to create a coexistence between people and Pokemon, help people and Pokemon coexist. So there is a kind of an underlying theme here that could be linked together. This led Devon to develop Infinity Energy, making Devon one of the top industries in Horn. Infinity Energy has since been used to power machinery such as the Submarine Explorer 1, the rockets launched from Moss Deep Space Center. The Devon parts were used to make the submarine run on Infinity Energy. So there's some big links there with Infinity Energy and the overall kind of synopsis of Infinity Energy is a type of energy in the Pokemon world derived from the life force of Pokemon. It was developed and harnessed by the Devon Corporation. Its development also involved research into Mega Evolution. So we know Mr. Stone's grandfather which if you go back in time, so not Mr. Stone's father, but Mr. Stone's grandfather, which could line up in the same sort of timeline as what we're expecting to see us in, in Pokemon Legends ZA, in that late 1800 period in Kalos, where the research was being conducted on the ultimate weapon. Maybe it's prior to the redevelopment program, just prior to that. And then this organization is a split off or an associate of Mr. Stone at that time. And this is what leads on to the underlying plan and specific construction that we're gonna see in this redevelopment plan of Lumio City. So I think if we go back to the logo and then zoom in on it and take a look at these colors, we've already touched upon Infinity Energy, the ultimate weapon, how they're linked, the same energy that come out of the ultimate weapon was in fact Infinity Energy that was coined later by the Devon Company which all derives from Pokemon's life force and the power of Xerneas and Eveltal. But it all goes back in the direction of Mega Evolution, right? Because that was teased at the very end of the trailer. And if we look at the Mega symbol as well, it is a rainbow color. And all of these colors are represented in the surrounding outline of this logo, which again really points towards this logo maybe being representative of that energy itself. And the other thing that it does represent as well is the exact colors that you see from this particular screenshot that I've taken from one of these cloud circles is the red, the yellow, the white, the lighter blue and the dark blue is the exact coloration almost of the Zygarde cores. Now Zygarde 100% form is made up of five cores. They are shown across its chest and it is documented that these are the five cores of Zygarde. These are the brains behind the Zygarde that make up the 100% form. These cores can make up the 50% and the 10% form when combined 
with the Zygote cells. Now, if you take a closer look at the cause, very reminiscent of this organization's logo. So could there be a link between the Infinity Energy Mega Evolution and even Zygarde in this ultimate plan. They link up somehow. We know Pokemon ZA has a very big association with Zygarde. That's obvious from the outlet. It is going to be the game where Zygarde plays a big role in it, but how it plays a big role in it is what we need to kind of try and determine or at least theorize going through this video. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was back to the trailer. The overarching message that we got from the redevelopment plans was a vision of beauty coexistence between people and Pokemon. So that is the message that they're sending out to the people or the people responsible for signing these plans off to allow the redevelopment to go forward, right? But I do think like all businesses and more sinister Pokemon bad guy teams or organizations in Pokemon, there's probably always a bit more of a sinister reason behind specific things done for an alternative reason. And there could be some clues to this in the architectural plans anyway. I think because X and Y is a present day game, we know a lot of information about Lumio City already, or at least a lot of the land marks within the city that are likely going to be created through this redevelopment program one of them would be the plazas and that central area which is the prism tower now in x and y we know luminos city has the vert plaza which is a green color it has the juan plaza which is a yellow color the rouge plaza which is a red color magenta plaza and the blue plaza which is a purple and a blue plaza. Now these plazas all surround a central piece, which is the Prism Tower. You know that as the Lumina City Gym in more modern times. And it's very interesting to me that all of the plazas surrounding this central area are the colors that would be emitted from a prism if you fire white light into it. So energy into it, out of it, you're gonna get that rainbow energy, that prism energy, which could be in turn interpreted into infinity energy. Prism Tower is known as a high tech tower. So it kind of insinuates that it's used for technology, right? So some sort of technology is used within this tower. So let's say that the logo is representing infinity energy and the whole organization's remit is about recreating infinity energy just like the ultimate weapon did 3000 years ago, but they're making a modern day version of it in Lumio City. They're laying the foundations to be able to create this high tech tower in the central piece of the town where it is gonna produce an endless supply of infinity energy. They've lined it up perfectly with having a population of people and Pokemon. The Pokemon are gonna be the sacrifices that they're gonna use at the plaza points around the city to feed their life force into the central plaza but you're missing that key component of Xerneas and Yveltal. How do you obtain these two Pokemon? Well, there is something that we can link again back to the Horn region, and this takes us into Auras, and in particular to the phenomenon of Mirage Spots, which in the source of it was a phenomenon where the legendary Pokemon would appear from what looked like a big portal ring, and what Pokemon is rumored to be behind these Mirage Spots? None other than the mythical Pokemon Hooper. Hooper has the ability to bend space and time, so in actual fact, if this organization knew about Hooper, which maybe they do from having that connection to Hoenn, where Hooper was originally shown whole legendary Pokemon from their homes into the Hoenn region, well, we could have seen the grandfather of Mr. Stone being aware of Hooper, then informed this organization about this Pokemon's ability. And their plan is to use Hooper to pull Xerneas and Eveltal into a location where they're going to be able to drain their power into the Prism Tower to produce infinity energy. So that could be the overall plan in itself. The organization represent infinity energy and what they want to use it for, who knows. But you can also link this back in if Xerneas and Veltal are being captive by Hooper and this organization. Maybe an imbalance starts to happen in the Kalos region and Zygarde comes to the forefront to put an end to this plan. It's just a theory, it's just an idea, but I do see there could be a link there with Hooper that is the Pokemon that has been used. And maybe even a byproduct in this, if we look back to the reference of Pokemon Legends Arceus, we had Giratina has an origin form. Palkia and Dialga before Legends Arceus just had their normal forms. Then in that game, they obtained their origin form. Now, if you look at Xerneas and Yveltal, 
they do have two other forms. They're not well documented. Xerneas has a neutral form and then an active form. Yveltal has a cocoon form and then its normal form that we know it as. And of course, Zygarde has three forms. It has its 10% form, its 50% form, and then its complete form. Could we maybe see, and as a byproduct of Xerneas and Yveltal being held captives, where they have to transform and then finally go into their complete forms, where you've got complete Zygarde, complete Xerneas, and complete Yveltal to overthrow Hooper and the organization that are behind this. It's just an idea. It's a fun one though. And I think obviously we have very little information to go off, but let me know down in the comment section below what you think of this theory. And if any of the information in this video have sparked some theories of your own, let's start a conversation down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Do hit the like button if you have and do subscribe to the channel. And if you guys enjoyed this, we'll do a lot more. I have a lot more topics I'd love to talk about in the lead up to the release of Pokemon Legends. ZA. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you all in another one very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.